That's Serena Kanacharya. Um, I have right now 10 invites for NASA for stuff. What is going on YouTube? It's your boy Spanko and today I'm here with Sparta King himself, my boy What's Bar. Up? And uh, it's been a while since you've been on the channel. Uh, definitely been a minute. Like, yeah. yeah. Been a while, but today we're at the Toronto Regional and uh, you were on... On uh, Atreya Runic. Which I think is the best uh, deck of the format. I love it a lot. I, I completely agree, actually. And uh, yeah, I'm going to let you take over, but before we do, make sure to like and subscribe if you guys haven't already. We're on the road to 10,000. Um, and with that, Bar Sparta King, All right. you go ahead. <laughs> Awesome, yeah, so I took um, Nacheria Runic to the event. Um, I think that this is infinitely better than Cash and infinitely better than Branded. Branded does nothing. Um, Kashira's good, but at the end of the day, this is the most consistent, powerful cards that I can expect the best results from no matter what. So I just find the utility in this deck, and if you're a good player, you can pilot this incredibly well. Um, so yeah, without further ado, you know, let's get right in. Wait, it. before we do one more thing, make sure to check out his channel. I'll link it at the top of the description below. Appreciate it. Um, and then yeah, let's get right into it. All right, let's go. So um, first off, for the main deck, we're gonna start off with three copies of um, Naturia Camellia. This is obviously the best one on summon, just foolish. And then if your opponent summons, um, you can revive one from your graveyard. Uh, and then additionally, so the revive is non-targeting. And then this also has an effective substitute cost by milling two from the top of your deck. You want to maximize copies of this because you need to open this because this works absolutely incredible with all of your runic cards. This is mandatory for you to run. So three Camellia, super standard. Then we hop into three copies of Mole Cricket. Mole Cricket's also amazing. Um, fun thing, uh, just a mini ruling that I asked the head judge today that a lot of people don't know. If your opponent has a zero attack monster, you can still summon two from your deck, even though it's um, zero, because it's still tied, which is six. So this card's absolutely incredible. And then the revive comes up a ton. In the mirror, this by itself just hard beats the mirror because you just make nap beast and it revives. Sunflower opponent's turn, amazing. That's all you need. And then trap up the package, you're playing the one copy of Sunflower. Uh, super straightforward. But that's it for the Naturia stuff. And then moving on, we have one copy of Gito, one copy of Kelbeck, and one copy of Keldos. So a lot of people cut this. I'm still playing these cards because they are absolutely busted. Um, this, to get you to all of your runic spells, you just mill five. And even if you hit, you want to hit field spell, you want to hit runic spells, or you want to hit tree or cricket. There's just way too many cards in the deck that you want to see in the graveyard to justify not playing these. I do find myself siding these out often a lot because these are really easy cards to side, but the deck is not the same if you're not maining these. Additionally, um, Keldo is by far the uh, the best one. You, if, if you're siding stuff out, I usually even still keep in the Keldo. It's really relevant in the mirror match and in general, just such a good card because the Shuffleback's really relevant. And at the very least, all these cards are level fours that you can normal summon and then synchro into either Scarlet or Overlay for a Dugaris or any of your rank four. So it's really, really good. So yeah, I wouldn't see myself cutting these. The only one that I wouldn't play is Medora because it's just too much. Finally, we're playing three copies of Ash. This is the only hand trap I'm maining. Uh, it's just really good to draw and obviously it's amazing. It's Brand Fusion and when you're playing a deck with Fountain, you want to be top decking cards that are relevant in the opponent's turn. So that's either more runic spells or your copy of Ash. Okay. All right, that's it for the monsters. I think it's uh, 15 or so. Uh, I really like these ratios. I wouldn't mess with anything. All right, so for the runic spells, we're playing three copies of Tip, three copies of uh, Flashing, three copies of Freezing, three copies of Slumber, uh, three copies of Destruction, uh, one copy of Smiting Storm, and one copy of Dispelling. So this ratio, I find through tons of testing, is by far the best one. I messed around with one copy of Golden Droplet. Um, I don't like it. It's just too much. But yeah, so you're playing tip, obviously as a search. This is the pop, um, banish two, effect negation, protection. This is really relevant with um, Sunflower and stuff. A lot of the times they think they can just go into battle phase, swing over your cards, beat over your nap, beat over whatever. This just comes out of nowhere and then they waste their um, battle phase, which is incredible. Spell and trap removal, and this is really, really, really good against birth or regained because both those cards are absolutely broken. And then these two, you're not supposed to use the effects to banish or to pitch from your opponent's hand. If they come up, they come up, this to deck your opponent out, this, whatever. But you're playing these as throwaway spells that you can just activate to get into Huggin. Because a big issue with the deck is if you're either only opening Runic cards or only opening the Churia cards. So when you have access to these extra two names, just mathematically and everything, it gives you a much better, like, probability of opening combo so i really like these and again these are just throwaway spells to activate just to fill up your grave for fountain or to summon cards on top of what you're already playing so really really good 
Also, you can search them with tip randomly if you've used the rest of them, which comes up more than you'd think. All right, moving on, we're playing two copies of Fountain. I don't like three, people who play three are wrong. Uh, oh, also uh, worth mentioning, this isn't once per turn. So please remember, you can go effect a Fountain, um, activate your spells, draw three, then activate a second Fountain, activate another spell, go into Gary, chain link one Fountain targeting the spells, chain link two Gary, chain block the Fountain, add back the other Fountain to your hand, and then you draw more. And if you wanna really continue, you can go Fountain again and Fountain draw more. Um, and yeah, it's really broken card. Don't play three, you can loop it so much without um, maxing out on those copies. I, I agree with that. I see a lot of people on three and I, I just, it's brick. It, it doesn't, doesn't do it. Yeah, it's, it's bad. It's not worth your time. And uh, I, I get wanting to open it because when I open it, I, I search one still, but I would never wanna like, Run more but, but that's the thing though like you open it you search a second one where does the third come in at that point kind of, you know what i mean you just don't want it there yeah. it's completely pointless if you want it that bad shuffle it back with keldo like it's, it's not the right thing um all right so next up we're playing uh three copies of blessing this card is absolutely broken so it's a non once per turn you can special summon from your hand or the graveyard and it's a quick synchro or a fusion spell obviously the fusion effect is irrelevant quick synchro comes up a lot so you can dodge cards like imperm book um all that stuff and in the mirror match all the runic spells because they all target so you can just dodge that completely and this card in the opponent's turn in the draw phase if you're passing on drone you can also go blessing revive the camellia camellia foolish into sunflower that way the moment they summon anything you immediately revive the sunflower with camellia and then you just straight up get uh, your two monster negates backed up by Buron, backed up by a full hand of Runic Spells, backed up by Fountain, backed up by more follow up, backed up by Camellia Fool. Like, uh, it's something. crazy. That's why I love this deck. You know, it snowballs so hard. And once you get rolling, you are unbeatable. You, you will not lose. Yep. Um, next up, this is my main deck tech card of choice, playing three copies of Book of Moon. Um, I like this so much. Uh, this card wins me so many games it's good into everything it's good into sprite it's good into cash it's good into math mech it's, it's just good into everything literally and on top of that you never need something like eclipse or main deck gamma seal i don't like because it just sits in your hand going first but stuff like book you just book their um cash on summon that forces them to have both um birth and another name birth and another name or normal summon uh rise heart specifically banish like cash riosis add back like what it, it's bad. Book is amazing in that yeah. matchup, and outside of that matchup, it's amazing for breaking boards, and I don't see myself cutting this card because it's just absolutely incredible. Also, it's relevant sometimes to flip your own Baron face down, then reflip it for the negate to be live again. All right, and then for the last three cards in the deck, we're playing three copies of Sacred Tree. When I first played this deck, I played one copy. That might sound crazy, but you can actually get away with one, but it's so much worse than three. Three is broken, but Everyone knows what Sacred Tree does. The main thing I want to focus about this card is the on-field effect. The on-field effect is really relevant and a lot of people don't know what it does, but it's actually a continuous trap where you can tribute a earth insect monster to special summon an earth plant monster from your deck, level four lower, or the other way. So if you tribute an earth plant, you can summon an earth insect. So that means if you open sunflower tree, which is ordinarily considered horrible, you can normal summon the sunflower set tree, go tree, tribute sunflower um, into mole cricket, mole cricket into camellia, Camellia or Camellia Cricket, and then you can revive Sunflower or whatever. And this is also just really good um, push on top of that in that sense, because it actually helps you extend in really bricky hands. And you also really need to draw this card because you want to discard it with a runic card so you can draw um, off the fountain. Absolutely incredible card, played at three. All right, that's it for the main deck. We're playing 41 cards. Um, this deck can play more than 40. If you want to play anything up to 43 maybe 44 if you really want to push it wouldn't go past that but um in testing like this that can definitely hold like slightly more than 40 it feels great all right on to the extra deck we're playing two copies of huggin and two copies of gary so huggin both of these cards are not once per turn keep that in mind this can search the field spell more than once in a turn this can add back the field spell more than once in a turn Huggin is really relevant because for anyone who's new to Runic, um, you can go a Runic spell in response slot, say they go um, MST, target your field spell, you chain a Runic spell, summon Huggin from your deck, and this has an unactivated effect, so you just banish it and protect your thing, which is absolutely incredible, protects it from everything. And also it's a level two, so you sync with Camellia into your Stardust Charge or um, Coral, whatever you want. Um, next up, we're playing two copies of Gary. 
Gary Control is a very valid way to play this deck. If it's a simplified game state, you go Gary in defense that. position. I hate that. I so know it, good. but I hate it. It's so good. Um, you go Gary in defense position, sit on your runic spells until you draw a Naturia card, and then you win. But um, this card can't be destroyed by card effects, so if they try to Mirror Jade pop it, irrelevant, can't be destroyed. And also, the only way they're adding it uh, without like tributing or however is battle phase, and then it pops a card in their field. So it also saves you from dying. Also, in the scenario where you have no monsters on their board in their turn, just summon it and then um, they swing into it, pops, amazing. It's a level four, so you synchro this and Coral into Brawn, or you overlay this into Degaris or whatever. It's a broken card, you have to play it. Um, next up, we have one copy of Start of Charge. This is for the hands where you don't open a, another runic card to extend, so you have to use your blessing to revive. Um, What's it called? Uh, Camellia, so you can synchro into Bronze still. But this card is generically really good, and it's also relevant with Blessing on hands that you just go Nat Beast. Uh, Coral Dragon, super self explanatory. Just don't forget it has the effect of Pop by Discard. Pop card on the field, very relevant. And you can also pitch your Kalbeck, Agito, Sacred Tree, all that trigger their effects. Uh, Nat Beast, this is the most broken card in the mirror. If you know you're playing the mirror, that means that you went tick, you banish any like runic card, any naturic card, you need to turbo this card out as fast as possible because it is unbeatable and they will scoop 10 out of 10 times. Broken card, toxic card, this is the reason why I hate the mirror. Um, next up, we have a copy of Barkion. Barkion is really good against Labyrinth, Trap Tricks, all that, but sometimes if you ran out, it's a very simplified game state, you run out of Coral and Stardust, you now have another level 6 Synchro at the very least if you're going with Camellia Sunflower, which is amazing. Then we have one copy of Scarlet Red Dragon Archfiend. I'm not playing this for time. Playing it for time is dumb. But you can play it for time. But we're not, because it's bad. Um, the reason you're playing this, it's a uh, very strong spot removal. Um, I actually just really like this card as a level 8 Synchro Monster. It blows up the field. And um, the burn is relevant because this is also a deck that does very little damage and putting up game can be hard. So if you're burning your opponent for 15 and then you have this, Brawn, whatever, then it's suddenly game or ordinarily you're passing, giving your opponent an extra turn. But yeah, this inherently for the generic spot removal, when you have nothing else to go into, is very strong. And I also have an alternate or first edition, so I kind of wanted to play it. Do you want it to flex it? Yeah, it, it, it's nice. I like it a lot. Um, all right. Next, we have one copy of Brawn, um, very self explanatory If they use Nibiru, all that, just um, tag out Brawn in the standby into Camellia, Camellia Foolish. Do the full line again. Uh, card's great, you have to play it. Don't play this deck if you don't have this card. Do not play this. Um, one copy of Chenging, really relevant to banish cards that are hard to out, such as Dragoon, all that stuff, and it's just... Um, Becomes a big beater. Giant, and decrease the opponent. Even protection is relevant, really good card. You need to play it. Um, that's it for the Synchros. For Xyz Monsters, I'm playing one copy of Exiton. All the cash players who don't banish this don't know what they're doing, because if you're playing against cash, make this card, you win, because they will have more cards than you, and you blow up everything. Uh, one copy of Dugaris, this comes up probably one in every four games. Um, the draw effect is really relevant, and sometimes if you need the push, the effect to revive is really relevant. You revive the Baron, get another negate, and at the very worst, you can double the attack of your monster when you need a push for a game, which, believe it or not, has come up three times today. Uh, yeah, good you know, card. You know one thing you haven't talked about yet? Mm. That I think people forget that this deck, even though it is a synchro-based deck and like you go Dugaris for game, Scarlet for game, whatever, you can just also win by decking your opponent out. Definitely. Like that's a very yeah. relevant strategy. Yeah, half the time, if you are if you run out of Naturia cards, that's your new win con. So you're just focusing on how many cards left in deck and then you want to cycle through as many slumbers, all that stuff as fast as possible and then recycle them back to your deck. Draw, 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 draw. Yeah. Until you deck them out. And cards like this help you not die while you're doing that. And yep. so does Gary. That's like Gary Control. Gary Control. A very relevant uh, strategy. And then our last disease monster, Baguska. You make this against Branded and you win because they can't do anything against it. Also, this is, again, good in a simplified game state or in general. It's just a fun card to slap on your board if you don't have anything else. Uh, final card in the Exodus. We're playing the one copy of Donner. Card's amazing to out... Um, in my opinion, not even about the monsters, but about those continuous spells like Birth and Regain. Because those things are very annoying to play against, and this card's really good. Um, that's it for the extra deck, but before I continue to the side, I just wanted to mention one other thing that I think is worth mentioning. Um, you can play Diabolosis, which is a level 8 synchro from came out from uh, Darkwing Blast as a common. And also a Freki, the level 5 um, runic card. And what you basically do is, in a hand where you open all runic cards and no Naturia, all that, you can activate the runic, summon a copy of um, Freki, which is a level 5. Normal summon either Ash or Bell if you're playing it. And then Synchro into Diablo, uh, Diablantis, my bad. 
And then Diabolantis on summon, um, sends a plant. foolish or yeah. planter insect. So you send a um, mole cricket from deck to graveyard. And then you can use its effect, target itself to treat itself as a tutor. Summon Huggin from your extra deck using a different card, then Synchro into Baron, and you also get the Fountain. So that's a valid thing that you can consider playing. In this case, what would you cut for it, though? That's the thing. I wouldn't, because I think all these cards will come up more than that. Plus, if you're doing that line, you have to main 3 bell, 3 ash, so you have to commit a lot more tight. Yeah. So I personally don't like it. I would consider it if I wasn't playing the Agito, Kalbeck, and um, Keldo, because yep. then I have the space for the bell. But I, I really like this extra deck, and this is through tons of testing. I think this is the best combination of cards for this deck. So I would stick this personally. Okay. Um, next up for the side deck, we have two copies of Magnemite and one copy of Druus. Three copies of anti Uh Honestly, this is purely for Branded for me. I'm not worried about, not about Mathmech, but it is relevant there too. Oh, true. With Branded, I just find that this gives me tons of information about their hand because if I target whatever, then their Albion still has to resolve if they're going for that line. So then I know, oh, if they don't make X card, then they have to have either one Despia in hand or no, and so on. And also, this is in general really, really good. Also, against Dragon Link, all those. I really like these, and I think people should be citing these still because they're very relevant. Playing three copies of Gamma Seal, cards incredible um, against Cash, but in general, it's really, really good against absolutely anything that poses a bit of problems if you're going second. Um, all that, really like this card, I wouldn't cut it. Next up, we're looking at, uh, we have two copies of Bell here. I'm supposed to be playing three. I have a 14 card side deck because I lost a sleeve before the event started. But this is supposed to be a third Bell. Um, Bell's really good in the mirror match. And then on top of that, um, it's just a very good card in general. I like this in the side deck, but if you're going to cut this, uh, play Droll instead. I think Droll's incredible too, so don't underestimate that card. It's either this or Droll. I think this card is really important. I would not cut it, but... Uh, I'm assuming you mean like if they main it rather than side it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Then yeah, you play yeah, Droll. Exactly. Yeah. Because Droll's really good against basically most of the decks right now. So yeah. If it's also going to be really good into Sayak format as well. Yeah. yeah. Exactly. No. So if you find a way to play this, you play Droll. Um, otherwise, yeah, but this card's really good. Then we're playing um, three copies of Eclipse. So you may find this weird because I'm siding obviously quite a bit. I have three Gamma Seal for cash and then I'm also maining the three books. But I find with, um, I don't sign in evenly against um, Cash. If I have the three books in the main, three Gamma Seals in the main, and three Eclipses in the main, the matchup's physically impossible to lose, backed up by the fact that every single Runic card just outs our eyes heart, and that card's way too big of a problem to be yeah. left untouched. So I really like this card, and at the very least, it's an Ash Bait. But um, this is cuttable for Droll if you want. I just personally like it, but again, this card's really cool, and the 9 ratio works incredible because you're at least opening one of those cards to... Even if cast. you don't open, you can draw into it pretty yeah, simply. Yeah, because you're drawing uh, yeah. 3 plus cards every turn. Like, I think the most cards I've drawn in one turn today should have been around 10 or 11 because I looped Fountain 3 times, and I also got like a draw off of... Um, That's four crazy. That's crazy. Um, and then for the last card in our setup, we're playing 3 copies of Evenly. Card's sick, I don't think I have to explain this, you know, Evenly's yeah, just broken. broken. But um, yeah, that's basically about it. That's Runic Naturia. Um, I have right now 10 invites for Nats with this deck. He's giving them away. Uh, <laughs> give away, um, give away. Like and subscribe. You get, uh, you get a free invite <laughs> if you can do that. I don't I'm know joking. about that one, but you know, 10 invites for Nats with this. And then um, just a lot of general testing. I find this uh, deck is really, really powerful. And it's my best recommendation for this format by far. Damn, 10 invitations. I, You've gone to like every event, huh? Basically. No, but um, I'll be at Philly, so if anyone is uh, playing at Philly, you know. Come, go say hi to your boy. Also, hell yeah. But, you know, play the second Philly. Actually, don't play the second Philly because the, the deck's match. bad. The deck's bad. Mirror don't play it. Don't, it. don't touch it. Don't side for Nothing. it. Don't expect deck's it. It's inexistent, you know. Don't don't touch it. But, yeah, this is best deck. So, Perfect. That's basically that. Thank you, Sparta King. No I appreciate the deck profile. Mm. Uh, I think the list is saucy. I really like the Book of Main uh, in the main, uh, in the Book of Moon in the main. There yep. you go. I should say that, as well as the shufflers and stuff. Those <laughs> are really cool. So thank you guys all for watching. I appreciate every single one of you. You want to say anything before we sign out? I thank you so much again for Spanko for having me on the channel. Like and subscribe if you haven't already. That's what I like to hear. Yeah, that's about it. All right, with that, Spanko and Sparta King signing out. Peace. Yeah.